Hey everyone, welcome to my new YouTube channel. I got this project lined up where I'm going to try and build 5 axis 3D printer, kind of like how CNC machines work. So if you are into that sort of thing, you may want to stick around. In this video, I will be showing you my current 3D printer. It's a DIY Hypercube Evolution. I put it together with a few custom tweaks. During this build, I made a lot of mistakes, but that is the price of learning this as a hobby. Now I am going to use that experience to build the next one. I've broken down this video into three parts, so feel free to jump into the bit that interests you the most. First up, I will introduce my current 3D printer, which I will be taking apart and converting into the 5-axis one. We will take a look at some of the issues it has in its current state. Next, I will share a rough plan of how I am going to start this robot concept of a 5-axis 3D printer. Lastly, I will show you how I plan to install an external stepper driver in the dual port, just in case I want to control bigger motors in the next build. So if you are curious to see how this project unfolds, or just enjoy tinkering with 3D printers like I do, feel free to follow along. Regarding the extruder, I initially bought two flexion extruders because I wanted to print TPU, flexible parts for my runs and projects, so I eventually took out one of them because I wanted to make this whole unit a bit lighter and to be able to print faster. And to calibrate the nozzles is actually a bit of pain, so I don't like that approach anymore. This time I will try to make this full assembly a bit lighter. Aside from that, the whole XY gantry is super heavy and the reason being that I made this 3D printer way too big so I ended up changing the build plate for a smaller one. The XY coverage is a bit uh, weak, let's say. So this is carbon fiber and carbon fiber usually bends. So when I try to remove the ripples from the print, I try to tension this. This pushes in from here and here and this, this part bends inwards. That was a terrible solution for which I had to do other kinds of workarounds. These motors they had to work a lot to be able to move all this, so that made the motors heat up a lot. They had to work extra heavy to move all the gantry and since that is the case I had to configure the controllers in the duet to send more amps to it uh, and they heat up as well. So I put some kind of uh, a solution for temperature management. It's actually really bad. Then we have an unused filament sensor that I actually sold and made work, but I cannot be bothered. Each time I print, I just bypass it. 24 volt power supply. This heat bed heats up real quick. That is actually really convenient. But initially, I had alternate current one, and that was way bigger. Uh, I never ended up printing that much. I decided to change it for a smaller one. This is another issue. When I move Y, that impacts the quality. So I want to fix that as well. If we take a look behind, cable management is not my strength, as you can see. But the boards are two-way boards. Actually really good. They have a really good web interface. I got also the expansion board. Now the plan is to use many of the other ports. I actually want to uh, be able to bypass two of those because I want to put a kernel controller and bigger motors. And I will show in a bit why is that. This little cooler is a consequence of my bad decision of cranking up the amps for the X and Y steppers. So yeah, it's not gonna be there anymore. I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna try to cool everything down passively. So what I'm gonna try to do now, before I disassemble the whole machine and take it in pieces, I'm gonna try to replace those motors for X and Y by those bigger ones. In order to make them work, I will have to use these external controllers. Uh, so I don't know how to connect that. I will try to do it now and see if it works. Another thing I want to add is a Raspberry Pi with Clipper. And the reason I want to plug this in now, instead of waiting to build a new one and then uh, using them, is so I can see if they work. I don't know if it's gonna be feasible or not, I think it is, but I better try, because then later on I'm gonna make the whole design in Fusion 360, and I don't want to have to change things of the kind later on. So the plan is to add one axis here somehow and then to attach some sort of bed to it. So this can rotate this way. Whatever is attached here should be able to rotate this way. What I'm gonna have to change is, so far the heat bed is going up, up or down, and that is Z. And now Z will have to come down from here. So that is gonna increase the weight on the whole gantry and make the print potentially way more slow so yeah that is the plan uh, what i'm gonna do now is this motor and this motor will have to move a much greater weight what i'm gonna do is to replace those remove this and remove this i'm gonna put the bigger motors i'm gonna wire them to those external controllers wire here wire here and i'm gonna wire that to the board 
All right, connecting this external stepper controller to the Duet 2 was a bit of a challenge for me, especially since I also had the Duet 5B 0.8 extension board installed. I had to do some digging to figure out how everything worked. It turns out that the Duet 2 board doesn't support disabling the internal controller, but you can still connect an external stepper controller at the same time using the step, direction and enable pins. The new versions of the board do come with a solder pad that you can break to disable the internal driver. After some research, a chat with ChatGDP and a bit of guesswork, I managed to wire everything up. Just to be safe, I always turn on the printer and check for any issue whenever I make a change to connections like this. Catching problems early makes them easier to fix. When everything was wired and the printer was on, the motor started spinning. I tried homing the printer and noticed that the motor changed speed and direction, but it wasn't working perfectly yet. To fix the continuous spinning, I tried a couple of things. First, I thought that the 3.3 volts logic levels from the duet board may not be sufficient for the stepper controller, which works with 5 volts, so I used the level shifter to address the issue. Wiring it was a bit of pain, but once done, the spinning speed changed. The issue still persisted though. I then considered the micro steps and configured them correctly on both the controller using the physical toggle pins and the board's framework. I set them to 16 micro steps, and while the rotation speed again changed, the problem was still there. Lastly, I checked if I connected the breakout pins in the correct order, and it turns out that two of them were crossed. This in that seemed easy, but once I did it, the motor didn't move at all. As a last resort, I tried unplugging the enable pin, which wasn't required by the stepper controller anyway, and that actually did the trick. Since this is just a proof of concept to see if I can use bigger steppers from my 5-axis 3D printer I'm happy with these results. Now that this part is done, I'm ready to disassemble the 3D printer and start designing the new one in Fusion 360. If you are interested in seeing how this project unfolds, please subscribe and leave a comment. I would love to hear your ideas. I will be honest, I don't know how I will tackle all the challenges that will come my way, but I'm excited to dive into it and see where it takes me.